I'm just a huge, huge fan of mobile photography. And, and you know why? It's because if you know how to do it properly with the right tools and avoiding some basic mistakes, you can really create breathless images without having to carry around a bulky camera. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 ways to improve your mobile photography. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Simone. I'm a professional photo videographer. And in this channel, we explore strategies, techniques, and tools to improve our photography, business, and productivity. Now you might be thinking, oh, definitely not a huge effort having the mirrorless with you when you go around. And yeah, you might be right, but let me tell you that in some cases, for example, when you have loads of stuff to do, or when you go out for grocery in central London, or going for a date with your girlfriend, um, you really don't want to have nothing else than your wallet and your phone in your pocket. Um, and one of the things that I hate about the camera is the strap. So it's just so annoying having this strap the whole day on, on your neck and it just hurts so much. I hate it. And this is the reason why I always go around with my backpack whenever I have the camera with me. So I can put it back or maybe use a clamp on the strap. But then what happens every single time is that whenever you don't have the camera with you, there is a beautiful sunset or the special lights or an incredible scene that you want to capture. And uh, without a camera, you're not gonna be bothered to take any kind of picture with your phone because most likely it will come out not really good. And you simply don't take the shot. Then what happens is that when you go home, you're just gonna regret so badly. But wrong. If you're like me, you probably have your phone 100% of the time in your pocket. And there are some tips and tricks that can make your little smartphone even better than a camera. Quick reminder, if after watching this video, you want to know more about mobile photography, I have an entire 13 lessons course dedicated to it, which you can access for free for 14 days. I'll leave you the link in the description down below if you wanna check it out. The first thing that you should do if you want to improve your photos is to activate the grid and you'll find it in any smartphone, whether it's Android, iOS, or whatever system you have is always present. If you want to activate in your iPhone, you just need to go in settings, and then you find camera, and then you're gonna find the grid right here. The grid are four lines, two vertical and two horizontal, equally distributed that divide the screen in nine different boxes of the same area. This helps a lot whenever you need to frame your composition of your image. Have you ever heard the rule of thirds? Well, this is exactly what we need it for. The four horizontal and vertical lines divide the frame into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. The rule of thirds states that the best place to position one or multiple subjects is where the line cross. So for example, if you have one person and that one person is holding something in their hands and this is a subject, you can put the person on one cross and then the subject on another cross, maybe top right and bottom left. At the same time, you can use the rule of thirds for managing the background. For example, if you're shooting on a beach, you can use one third for the beach, one third for the sea and one third for the sky. These combination can be multiple and depending on the situation that you're in, you can try to use at your preferences this rule. And remember that even if you want to place your subject at the center of the picture, you can play around with the rule of thirds with the background or with foreground elements as well. For example, in this picture that I shot in Dardaldo in the south of the UK, me, the subject is placed in the intersection of the lines. Then if we look at carefully at the background, we notice that one third is the grass, one third is the sky and one third is the bleach and sea. In this other example, the boat is the subject and is placed in the top right intersection of the two lines. And the foam created by its motion takes up two thirds of the overall image. Let's have a look at this last example of me holding the phone. It was an ad for Xiaomi and guess what? My face is on the top left corner cross and the phone is on the top right cross. In addition, my body covers two thirds, basically four boxes, and other elements occupy only one third of the screen. Pretty cool, right? 
Okay, the second tip is something that is absolutely key. Every time you need to take a picture with your phone, and I mean always, always, always clean your camera with your clothes, no matter the cover you're using. And doesn't matter if your camera goes out from your pocket or you have it ready in your hand, always clean the camera of your phone with the clothes for the glasses or maybe your t-shirt or your sweater or whatever you have in your hands. It's incredible how this thing can get so dirty, especially in this type of phone, like this is an iPhone uh, 11 Pro Max that has the camera that is going outside. I have no idea how is that possible, but every single time that I want to take a picture, it's always dirty, especially if you're holding with your hands. Even if you go very, very close, our hands are always dirty and they leave a halo on top of the camera that will make the picture blurred overall. Even if you have it in your pocket and you think, oh yeah, but it was just in my pocket, it's always clean. No, it's always dirty. If you have on top of your table, or if you're maybe in the shower with the steam, or if you have it in your jacket, any situation require these cameras to be clean. It just gets dirty, and the majority of times it's not even noticeable, but the camera loses quality when it's dirty. Ever happen that your images look more foggy than usual? All right, now you know why. I still make this mistake sometimes and it's annoying because you clean it maybe two minutes earlier but it became dirty without even touching it. Hmm, yeah, that's how it is. Okay, third tip, double check that you're using the highest possible quality of the camera. This works also for videos. Go in settings, camera, and maybe check all the options that are there. In an iPhone, you go in settings and then again, camera, and then you can find all the options that are here. And for example, if you go in format, there is high efficiency or most compatible. High efficiency use a different coder and most of the times takes better photos. So always recommend using high efficiency unless you have old computers and then you need most compatible, otherwise you can't see them. And if you read also down below, it's written that 4K at 60 FPS and 180p at 240 FPS require high efficiency. In the iPhone, there are not many settings that allow you to control this, but I'm pretty sure that Android has more function. The other day when I was trying the new Xiaomi Mi 11, it had a lot of different function, a lot of different settings that can modify the quality of the picture themselves. So just make sure that these settings are at the best quality. And then for video, here in the iPhone, you can record video with different options. Just make sure that you are at 4K if you want to register the best quality. 30 FPS or 60 FPS doesn't even really matter for the quality. It's just about how slower you can slow it down in post-production. Suggestion is use 30 FPS or 24 FPS for more cinematic footages. Bear in mind that whenever you're using 4K or a higher 8K, the Mi 11 had 8K, the is extremely big. So if you have storage problem, then you might reconsider doing it. At the same time, you can also check the slow motion, whether you want it 120 FPS or 240 FPS here in this iPhone. But then it really depends on your phone, so just check it. One more tip that I can give you is to be careful when you're using selfie cameras, especially if you need to do behind the scenes of like TikTok and stuff. When you have the camera on selfie mode, we want the image from the front of the camera to see how we see ourselves. Otherwise we'll look weird. So all the cameras have the chance to flick on or off the mirroring options. Just check which one you like the most. So if you notice that sometimes you look very weird when taking selfies, well, this is the reason. So play around with it. The fifth tip applies only to those who have a modern phone with ultra wide cameras. All right, listen up. Don't use it for taking high quality photos, never. Especially if you're not in an extremely bright location. These ultra wide cameras, iPhone included, are not as good as the main camera on your phone. So just avoid it as much as possible. Also, if you're using an ultra wide camera while shooting portraits or people in general, they'll look bad, like squished, because that's the effect of ultra wide on people, even on camera. So just don't use it if not necessary. I'm pretty sure in a few months, this tip won't apply anymore as they'll come up with crazy amazing ultra wide cameras as well. They'll be probably even better than what we have right now. So this is probably just for the present. All right, before heading to the sixth tip, I just wanted to remind you that subscribing to this channel would cost nothing to you, but will keep me creating loads of different tutorial for free for everyone. So yeah, thanks in advance for your support. And then we're gonna talk about the sixth tip. The majority of the modern phones have different types of camera. And the best way 
way is to use the two pair zoomed option. And there are several reasons for this. Because the aperture is fixed, when you're zoomed in with the two pair, the bouquet, kind of like the portrait effect, is more remarked. That means that the background will be more blurred or the foreground will be more blurred while the subject will be more in focus and therefore creates more depth in the picture. And this works exactly opposite way of wide angle. When shooting people, the effect is exactly the opposite than the ultra wide camera. It looks better. Consider that the original face shape of a human is obtained with a 50 millimeter ish lens. And in the majority of phones, two pair is still an optical effect, which means that it doesn't lose quality despite being zoomed in. And this leads us to the seventh tip, which is never zoom in when you're taking the photos more than the native zoom, usually after two pair, as this would be a digital effect and provokes big quality losses. There are two options to solve this. One, go closer to the object. And I totally suggest this every single time that you can. It's just the best option. Second option would be to try to crop the image in post-production. But then you might ask, why not just zooming in directly while taking the photo? Well, the reason is that if you zoom directly in the photo, you don't have the chance to zoom back in post-production and the quality will be exactly the same as taking a normal picture at the native zoom and then cropping in. Plus, most of the editing software native in iPhone, for example, are non-destructible. So anytime you can go back at your original format, unless you're saving as a new picture. And now another question you might ask is why brands then allow to zoom in so much directly on camera if that doesn't make the quality as good? And the reason is that users love, 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 love to feel very powerful and zooming in 30 times and they don't care about image quality. Um, so yeah, it's your choice. The eighth tip is to always shoot during daylight and as close as possible to a window, but not in harsh light. One of the biggest problem about smartphones is that they take amazing pictures during the day, but most likely suck during the night. And this is because they have a very small sensor comparing to a mirrorless or DLSRR. As a rule of thumb, keep the window 45 degrees towards your subject. If you can, don't let the light coming from the side, but 45 degrees or in the front, but not only on the side. And do not stay under direct sun unless you want to create a specific effect. If you can't find a window 45 degrees towards your subject or your object, then the best way would be to bounce the light from the window towards another corner of the house. The soft light provoked by bouncing light on the wall is much better for any type of photography. And the closer you are to the window, the stronger the light will be. And most likely the better the quality of the light you have and therefore much better photos. The majority of the times the lights we have in our houses, like these ones that you see up here, even in your house, are terrible for photos. And the chances are that they'll destroy your pictures. Lighting up a subject, especially if you're taking portraits of people photos from the top, just creates terrible shadows. So make sure to shoot during the daylight covered from direct sun, AKA stay in the shadow of the sun. My ninth tip is about editing. Don't take it personal, but if you're a beginner, there is a very high chance that you're over editing your photos. I was exactly like you. I used to take the slider structure on Instagram and bump it boom, all the way to the right. Same as clarity, saturation and contrast or even more. It is a huge mistake and a classic one that everyone does when starts. So my suggestion is to force yourself to use any slider at half of its full potential maximum. For example, if the saturation slider allows you to move from zero to a hundred, the maximum you should go is 50 or even better 30. This applies to all the editing tools that you see and that you're using in any app that you're using. The reason for this is that a great edit is the sum of multiple small adjustments, not a few big adjustments. The concept is trying a tiny bit one slider, then move to the other option, then do the third, fourth, fifth adjustment. And if you feel like you need to retouch again the first option, then go ahead afterwards. Don't go crazy with any slider at first. I talk a lot about tips and tricks, strategies, techniques, and tools 
and mistakes to avoid in my mobile photography course, which you can access for free for 14 days. If you are into mobile photography and you'd like to learn how you can exploit your phone even more, I highly suggest you check it out. If you're interested, I'll leave you the link down in the description. And this leads to the 10th tip, which is shooting in DNG whenever possible. I've talked about loads of things about the native camera of your phone, but the absolute best way to bring your photos to the next level is to use any app that allows to take full photos. I use the free app Lightroom Mobile. On the top corner, when you open the built-in camera within the app, you might have the option to shoot in JPG or DNG. If you don't have the option, that means that your phone doesn't support the format yet. Whenever you have the chance to upgrade to a newer phone, that will make a big difference shooting in GNG. And the reason is that the format contains much more information than JPG. DNG format files are much bigger, contain more information, and therefore you can be much more precise when you need to edit, and color are just much better. Let me give you a practical example. JPG, let's say, from a scale to 1 to 10, you can only pick 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 as a color code. Whereas in DNG, you can pick 1.1, 1.5, 5.8. Do you get what I mean? As always, if you have problems about storage, just be careful as DNG are much bigger files. And even within Lightroom, you can activate the grid and all the previous rules that we've talked about are still valid, of course. But if you want to know more about how to use Lightroom and which other apps you should use to increase the level of your photos taken with your mobile, you can check out the video up here where I show you my top four apps for mobile photography. Also, follow me on Instagram and TikTok as I post daily content on how to improve your photography. Once again, click that thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed this video. I'll leave up here the video where I talk about my top four mobile photography apps, and up here, a playlist of little cool videos on how to take specific photos with your camera or your mobile, like with black background photos or headshots for LinkedIn. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time, ciao.